Hello, I'm Shane Crawford and welcome to this week's episode of Postcards which is brought to you by Dodge. I'm joining you here from Her Majesty's Theatre where I'll be getting a behind the scenes tour by one of the stars later on. But first, let's see where the team gets to. Glenn visits the newly revitalised Royal Hotel in Mornington. Lauren finds a new and crafty tourism experience in Creswick. Brody goes to the world's longest lunch and the immersory at Queensbridge Square. And I take you on a behind the scenes tour of Greece, meeting some of its big stars along the way. Everyone has their own idea of what you can do for the perfect weekend away. And for those of you keen on checking out the Mornington Peninsula who demand luxury, where you'll be wine and dine in style and not have to lift a finger or go anywhere, I might have something for you. The seaside town of Mornington is situated just 57 kilometres southeast of Melbourne, right on Port Phillip Bay, and is a very popular spot for day trippers keen on sampling the award-winning wines and the excellent produce the peninsula is famous for. And one place where you can get a taste for it all is the Royal Hotel. The Royal Hotel in Mornington is a grand old pub with a very interesting history. Back in the 1850s when it first opened, this was the halfway point for the Cobb Co stagecoach between Melbourne and Portsea. These days, she's looking grander than ever. And a couple of nights here is a truly unique experience. This beautiful hotel has been a favourite amongst locals for over 150 years and thanks to a major renovation care of the new owners, the Royal is again the pride of Mornington. Built in 1857, so it has a very colourful history. Uh, the Royal Hotel was originally called Schnapper Point Hotel. It was later renamed when we had visits of royalty. So in the 1870s it became the Royal Hotel. The hotel is extremely iconic to the Mornington community. We have people who have been married here 50 years ago, so we regularly have our customers come in and tell us about the beautiful part that the Royal Hotel has played in their family history. Owner and head chef Dane Shaw has a wealth of experience working both in Australia and internationally in some of the world's top eateries, and he's adding to this beautiful hotel's appeal with his modern menu that features only the best seasonal and regional produce. We'll start off with the entrees. I've got the uh, liverwurst pate with pickles and olives. I've got the wagyu brizola with pickled fennel and a dukkha crumbed egg. The beetroot and vodka cured salmon. Oysters from South Australia with champagne and lime popping pearls. Caesar salad, the cheese, and for our main course, the fish and chips, which is one of our best sellers. And you've got the scotch fillet with hot mustard coleslaw. We're gonna wash that down with a glass of the Jones Road Shardy. Besides the restaurant, you can grab a beer in the tavern where you can kick back in front of the fire during the colder months with some of their casual dining options that include pub classics and grazing plates. There's also live music in the tavern every weekend. The Royal is also home to one of the best beer gardens on the Mornington Peninsula and the Victoriana Room is simply stunning, making it the perfect venue for weddings, conferences and special events, whether you're after a cocktail party or a formal sit-down dinner. Upstairs at the Royal, you'll find these beautiful, newly renovated rooms, so if you like the hospitality on offer, you can stick around just a little longer. If you're spending a night at the Royal, you have a couple of options. You can choose between the deluxe suites and the premium suites. All of the rooms are impeccably furnished and feature private bathrooms and a balcony, setting a new standard for luxury accommodation on the Mornington Peninsula. With Philippa's mum Maria also actively involved, adding a wealth of experience and personality, this family business has carried on the tradition of the Royal Hotel and made it something truly special. Guys, congratulations. I love what you've done with the place. It looks fantastic. And thank you for having me and making me feel like part of the family. Glenn, you're welcome back anytime. Oh, you'll regret that. You won't get rid of me now. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. For more information on the Royal Hotel in Mornington, you can give them a call or check out their website. The Melbourne Food and Wine Festival is now underway and various restaurants are offering an express lunch for only $40. So log onto the website and get booking. Thomas the Tank Engine is returning to Emerald Station next weekend, so why not take the children and enjoy the train ride? Meet the Fat Controller and take part in the activities on offer. 
And be sure to dust off your dancing shoes this week at Victoria's premier rock and roll event, the Ararat Jailhouse Rock Festival. Coming up after the break, I'm enjoying all the action of the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival here at the Bank of Melbourne World's Longest Lunch. Melbourne is excited to be paired with the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival for the third year. They're passionate about supporting events and organisations that matter to Victorians. And the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival is one of the state's premier celebrations of food, wine and culture. The Immersory Festival Kitchen Bar and Rain Garden is the spectacular hub for the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival anchored to the Yarra River at Queensbridge Square. Over 17 days it will play host to some of Victoria's most inspiring food, wine and cocktails. Take a seat by the open kitchen to dine on a menu created by seven of Victoria's top chefs, each taking culinary inspiration from water. Melburnians love eating out, but getting a reservation at some of the hottest restaurants can be tricky. Bank of Melbourne helps ease the pain with guaranteed bookings on Friday nights and Saturday mornings during the festival. For a chance to win, anyone can play the online queue jumper game. Move throughout the multiple levels to marvel at the rain garden and learn how to harness rainwater to grow plants and food, while understanding more about the globe's most precious resource. From the immersory, I saved myself the walk and jumped in a Bank of Melbourne pedicab, which were on hand for the festival's opening weekend. Bank of Melbourne was thrilled to present one of the festival's most popular events, the spectacular World's Longest Lunch, held this year on the banks of the Yarra. 1,500 food and wine lovers were seated on a spectacular 530 metre long table along Alexander Park. Natalie, logistically speaking, this is an amazing event. How many months go into the planning? Well, Brody, we really start off um, the day after the longest latch deciding <laughs> which venue are we going to use next year and we essentially need four to five hundred metres of space and we've done it in so many venues, the MCG, the art gallery, so it really is a year in the making that we certainly start considering the venue. To get all the meals out on time you must have an amazing crew working for you. How many staff are here today? We've got uh, over 200 staff here today and we've got three on-site kitchens and we're also working with a number of William Angler's first year students who are here today to serve everybody a beautiful lunch. A three course menu has been created by three of Victoria's legendary chefs, Stefano De Perry, Adam De Silva and Jacques Ramond. We caught up with the masterminds on the day. Now tell me guys, who was in charge of what course? Well I'm in charge of the entree, which I think is probably the pinnacle of the lunch. <laughs> so far. Oh, and then we'll work our way up or down. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be the judge of which, which course I'm doing amazing smoked tiramisu kingfish salad with a roasted rice and tamarind dressing. Beautiful mint, coriander, bit of chilli. Fantastic for this beautiful day on the Yarra. That amazing. does sound delicious. Well, I've done a dish which uh, is a reflection of my time in the Amazon. It's a duck that what we call a duck tukupi and it's cooked with a very tangy broth with some sweet potatoes and some Asian greens. So it should be, you know, I hope, 
the perfect reflection of the day. Much better than the entree, I can assure you. <laughs> Much better than the entree! Much better! Give me a hug! So competitive! So competitive! Okay, so we still have someone to go, thank you! Oh, I'll step back to you! Go, go, go! go, 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 go you're done, you're done! <laughs> well, I have a humble carrot and almond meal cake with an eggplant sauce, and mine is a tribute to the Mary River. Hopefully people will it's like really it. It's really good, I love your yeah. dish. Man, I love this dish as well. It sounds Almost beautiful. more than the main course. And <laughs> more than you, that's for sure. No problem about her. More than you. <laughs> but at least we love her. Oh, <laughs> thanks guys. Well, it sounds like you've worked very hard. I think you've earned a drink. Thank you. Good Thank idea. <laughs> if you want to know how Bank of Melbourne is helping to build a better Victoria and all about playing queue jumper, visit the website on screen now. And the immersory is open from 7.30am till 11pm until the festival ends on March 16th. Coming up after the break, I'm taking a Sunday drive to Creswick where we'll catch up with these guys. <laughs> Fresh air, there's nothing quite like jumping in the car and heading to check out the Victorian countryside, which is exactly what I'm doing today on my Sunday drive, brought to you by Dodge. Today, Creswick is on my radar, a small town located around an hour and a half from the city between Ballarat and Dalesford. One of the big draw cards to this old gold mining town is the Creswick Woolen Mill, the only coloured spinning mill of its type in Australia. The Creswick Woolen Mills offers luxurious, high-quality natural fibre products that includes blankets, throws, clothes, accessories and so much more. But a visit here isn't just about shopping. You can check out their new exhibition, A Very Fine Yarn, showcasing the journey of fibre all the way from its source on the alpaca, through the manufacturing process, to how it ends up on the shop shelf. This alpaca wool is so soft, but it's just like cotton wool. So how does it get processed from here, Jody? Well, from here it goes uh, to the blending. Mm -hmm. and the blending has like a recipe that needs to go into this depending on what product we're making. Once it's in the carding machine, there's like big combs mm -hmm. on the carding machine and that combs and refines the yarn. From the carding machine, it goes to the spinning machine and what the spinning frame does is puts a twist in the yarn, which gives it its strength. And that's how you get all those beautiful products. Absolutely. <laughs> it's quite a process, isn't it? It certainly is. Hmm. Well, thanks for the yarn. My pleasure. <laughs> Established in 1947 by Polish immigrant Paul Rizzo, Creswick Mill is still a family-run business. The alpacas themselves are a big part of the team and visitors get the opportunity to get up close and personal with these cute critters. Alpaca wool is only shorn once a year, so the end result is very special, <laughs> but these guys have only recently had a haircut, so they're looking pretty good and very soft. <laughs> it's worth taking a drive and admiring the architecture of Creswick's Grand Main Street, studded with buildings that owe their existence to the Gold Rush Town's heydays. Locals and visitors alike have struck it lucky yet again with this quaint French patisserie, so let's go and have a look. La Peche Gourmand offers an array of freshly baked French treats. After opening their doors in March 2012, owners Paul and Marie Williams have been busy creating authentic homemade bread and pastries. Do it the way the French would do it and just try a little bit of everything. 
The name La Peche Gamon translates to sin of gluttony, but to the French, it's more about indulging in something that you just can't resist. <laughs> La Peche Gourmand is open Tuesday to Saturday from 7.30 until 4. Entry to the Creswick Woolen Mills is free. They're open seven days a week from 9am. The Royal Hotel in Mornington has undergone a wonderful transformation and today one Postcards viewer will be able to experience this divine boutique hotel for themselves along with a guest. With a fantastic prize including two nights midweek accommodation for two people and breakfast both mornings, this week's competition is valued at up to $550. To enter, dial 1902 or SMS 199 54992 with your name, address and daytime phone number before midday Tuesday. And remember, just like last week's winner whose name appears now on the screen, today's competition winner will be announced in our next show. Coming up after the break, I'm getting a tour behind the scenes of the hit musical Grease with this man right here, Rob Mills. Do I make a good T-Bird? Yeah, yeah, not bad. All right, well, let's see your strut though. T-Birds right. all have to strut. Yeah, strut. Sure. Yeah. See you after the break.